I'm Bob Faulkner, and permit me to give you a brief overview of the show that follows. We shall reveal newspaper headlines that I predicted about two months ago and seal them in a triple lock box, and they were safely guarded during this time increment. But uh, more about that later. We'll also see ubiquitous sponge balls and such classics as the linking rings, the famous Hindu cups and balls, and some educated playing cards. Let's go to our studio now. I'd like you to see the warm-up of a deck of cards, as it might have been done by the famous illusionist of the mid-30s, the king of cards himself, the late and great Howard Thurston. Watch. Sometimes he would uh, make the first card. His hand never, never leave the end of his arm during the entire time, but he'd make the first card change into another card. And then he warmed the deck up in this manner. This, and as a kid at 12, I idolized him. That was the year of Sally Rand, so he did a Sally Rand shuffle, a Jewish shuffle, Passover. And I shouldn't say the next one because uh, there's too much ethnic humor around, I think. But the Polish shuffle, one card at a time. And, of course, the, uh, the uh, University of Wisconsin shuffle. No skill, just guts. And then he did a thing that was called, some, by me anyway, it was called 52 Pickup. Easy now. Easy, old man. The Niagara Falls Shuffle. <laughs> Niagara Falls Shuffle from the Canadian side. <laughs> you know, card manipulation is a real challenge to one's digital skill. The fingers must be supple. Oh, that's painful. But the magic I enjoy the most is done with young people, like with my friend Pete. Did you hold one of those, Pete? Are you married? I'm sorry about that, Pete. Would you hold that one? Now, I want to take this one, Pete. You be the table. I want to take this one over here, and I want you to hold this one here. Squeeze it very hard. Very slowly. This strange-looking object is a Las Vegas pocketbook. When I unsnapped it and reached inside, I found a third ball. I gave it to my friend Pete, and, well, you'll see what happened. I'm going to take this one over there, and I want you to take one, two in that hand. Open your hand and squeeze it tightly. Now, slowly place one ball at a time down there. Just pretend your hand is a table. Thanks, Pete. I'm going to take this one, put in that hand. I'm going to take this one, and this third one I'm going to put down in here and get a little wuffle dust and sprinkle. Now, what do I have? One or two? Thanks, Pete. The Chinese linking rings provide both mystery and suspense, solid through solid, steel through steel. But they're also a great tool for laughter, as you'll soon see. Watch the top ring, ladies and gentlemen. Watch the top ring. Now, you've just seen the top ring go to the bottom. This time, you'll see the top ring go to the bottom, and the bottom ring go to the top. Yeah. Now, the world-renowned 3,000-year-old mystery the Hindu cups and balls. We have three cups and we have three balls, but to properly recreate this ancient riddle, we should have a magic wand. I don't have a wand, but I have a pocketbook that contains almost everything. I do hope... Come out of there, you rascal. I do hope this wand works. And secondly, you have to have special copper cups. That's hard to say. It can get you in trouble. With trap, with trap doors on the bottom. Now, you can tell, Pete, there's a trap door because one cup goes right through the other. Now, this one goes through faster because these are looser springs. Another way you can tell these are magic cups is that when you tap the cup on the inside, you'll find it's much deeper on the inside than the outside. 
Now, in addition to that, you need not one, but you need three of these little red rascals here. One here, one here, and one here. Now, the idea is, Pete, to take the end one like this, like that. That's on page 62. You're reading too fast. That's right. You, know, you have to look it up now. It's all right. It'll wait. And you take this one, but you rotate the wrist on this one and wipe it away. And over here, this is the most difficult one of all. Now, Pete, I did put it in that hand, and there's nothing here. You see? Trust me. It's all in the wand, the way I rotate it. I'm trying to play the house, but maybe this is better like that. It is in that hand. But when I do this, it charges the wand with electricity. And they all come back to the roost like little homing pigeons. Now, Pete, would you stand over here? Remember, you're a magician. Now you belong to club. Let's be professional. Just pick up the wand. I won't touch it. You touch whatever cup you want me to do in the trick. Just touch it. That's the one, Pete. Isn't that strange? Because the top you see, the one you touched, two balls went to there. Now, Pete, if the problem is, of course, if you had touched the one over here, then they would have gone over to this side. To make them join vertically, you do it like this. To make them go vertically down, we do it this way. Again, it's all contingent upon the trap door. That's what makes the difference. The trap door. Sometimes, there are two. I'll just turn it and see it a little better. Sometimes they stick. That time they stuck. Let me just. I think that had the right sound. Now I'm going to explain how it's done, despite the fact that smart girls and magicians never talk. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it from the beginning to the end, the exact, the exact modus operandi. It's a word called misdirection or making people look the wrong place at the right time. You remember at the beginning? powders up into little fine pieces sometimes. <laughs> now let me do it more slowly. <laughs> do it much more slowly this time. You're a great audience. Thank you. Pete, it's there. I beg your pardon, sir? No, it's still there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You're getting a little skeptical to be sure they're there. Now you know they're there. And I'll stay back and just use the wand. Now we'll talk about the word known as misdirection. It means making you look the wrong place at the right time. A big movement. As I make a big gesture, as I make a big gesture, you're not paying attention down here, and you should be watching here all the time. Look. There's still this one over here, you recall. Now watch. See, the big move makes you look there, but it's here. Now with that big gesture, and it's used in advertising all the time, this is known as palming. This is finger palming. And this is Bob Faulkner finger palming. That's called advertising. Next, I'm going to sneak the ball under the cup. The technical name for that is sneaking the ball <laughs> under the cup. Now watch how slowly one ball. There's no question about that. Now, if I took one ball from here, see, they're all watching the wrong place, and one from here, how many should that leave over there? Well, there are three there <laughs> because they're like little homing pigeons. Now, watch. I'll, I'll do it more slowly. One, two, three. Now, you know, if I took three balls from there and there's one back under there, 
there has to be four balls, right? And you'd be absolutely correct. <laughs> Although this is the age of Aquarius, my birth sign is that of Cancer the Crab, as indicated on my gold medallion. Well, we sort of use it as a, uh, as a focal point during the next experiment in precognition. Now watch very closely, because the mind is quicker than the eye. Do you all agree that this gentleman will... S he can... Diff and this, just fine, you can just sit there and relax, sir, if you will. And your friends seem to be ready to push you into this. All right. So we'll now think of a number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or zero. If anyone objects to this man, please say so now, because we are not in cahoots. I promise you this. All right. Ready to start thinking of your number? Ready? Concentrate. Are you thinking of seven? Who's thinking of seven? In the back? Would you please turn your seven off, sir? All right. I'm sorry about the interference. But try and no one else think of your number. It comes time for your quarter. Ready? Concentrate. Don't change it. Now, what's your number? Five. Were you originally thinking of seven? Beg pardon? No. You were not. All right. I believe you. Who, who do we have here? Whom do we have? The lady in the green. Does anyone object to her with the six on your arm sleeve? All right. Would you raise your hand so they can all know? Just raise your hand. Ready? Concentrate. Now. What is your number? Three. Three? You look more like a four to me. <laughs> Five. Three. Now this is four to the tenth power, so we got one chance out of 10,000. All right, down here. Ma'am, would you name your number? Ready? Concentrate now. Eight. Five, three, eight. Five, three, eight. Over here, whom did we pick? Would you help? Ready? Concentrate. Now. Two. Two. Five, three, Eight, two. Well, there are a lot of reasons we could pick a number. Five, three, eight, two. I have my own reason why I think you picked a certain number. Five, three, eight, two. I have my birthstone here. It's engraved. It's gold. Would someone volunteer to come up and help me finish this experiment? Ma'am, would you help me? Yes. The attractive young lady in the gold. Yes. What is your name? Uh, Marge Bartlett. Marge Bartlett? Right. Thanks for coming up here, Marge. I don't like to kiss ladies' hands, but I like the taste of Jurgen's lotion. We've never met before. No. And you seem proud of that fact. All right, five. Let's just confirm it. Get serious just for a minute. Name your numbers and I point to you. Five. Five. Three. Five, three. Five, three, eight. Two. There's a little medallion here. It's gold. It's deeply inscribed. I did this last night in Cleveland. Not last night. Last week in Cleveland, Ohio. And the lady said, I don't know if it's right or wrong. I can't see without my glasses. We blew 20 minutes. Five, three, eight, two. Would you please read what is inscribed on the back? Five, three, eight. I call our next experiment three-card clairvoyance. It involves three gentlemen in the audience and this rubber-banded deck of cards. I'm going to have a test with three men. I want you to see all these cards are different. Each card is different. There's no question about that. I'm going to throw the deck of cards in the audience. The back is okay, too. This is very boring, but I'll go through that. They're all different, believe me. There's nothing gimmicky about the deck of cards. I'm going to band them with a rubber band only because I want you to throw them to your next door neighbor and I want him to catch it. Now, I'm going to toss this deck. I won't even look at the person to whom it goes. And when he catches it, I want him to stand up and stop where his thumb tells him to stop. 
I only wanted to look at one card at a time and then look at it. All right, I'll throw the first. Okay, you guys have been heckling him. I'll try to hit one of you three in the end. Now just catch the deck. All right, stand up, sir. What is your name? Art. Just hold the deck flat like a table, face down. And look at me, and when you think I'm telling your thumb to stop riffling, stop. Riffle. Stop when you want. Look. Don't tell anybody what it is. Don't even give them a clue. Throw the deck to someone else who can catch it. <laughs> Sir, would you stand up? All right, hold the deck flat. Ready? Start. Stop when you want. Now? Now? Look, don't anyone throw the deck over here to someone who can catch it. All right, sir, look at me. Riffle, stop when you want. Okay, look, if that's your choice. I don't want you looking at a lot of them changing your mind. Throw the pack to me. Would all three of you stand up? This is the deck of cards they've been using. <clears throat> no, it is not a gimmick deck. All right, I want you first to think of the color. Not as a shape, but just an opaque, rectilinear color, red or black. All right, now you've got the color. Now squeeze it to the shape of a suit. If it's a diamond, squeeze that red to the shape of a diamond in your mind. Great. Great, I got good, very good empathy with you. All right, you've got your, if it's a spade, it's squeeze that black to spade. If it's a club, squeeze it to a club. Okay, you've got your suit. Now think of from 1 to 13. Remember I said we have an affinity for numbers. If it's a king, it would be 13. A jack would be 11. A queen would be 12. Think of your number and suit. Give no cue if I get yours right. And if I get them all right, then be seated. But don't give a cue to your neighbor. I'll name the three cards I think it is. And if I'm right, all of you sit down. Please be honest with me, because you can really, really make it wrong. We have to be honest with each other. Okay. King of spades, ace of diamonds, two of hearts. We talked briefly about the newspaper prediction headlines previously, and it's time now for the moment of truth. But before we reveal the headlines, I think it's very important that you be apprised of the following facts. I'd like to call in at this time Officer John Score. Officer Score has with him a locked box. And if you will place it right here on the platform and step up on here with me, please. Let me read to you a piece of paper here. It says, to whom it may concern. This is to confirm the fact, under penalty of $10,000 forfeiture, that I shall not touch the prediction given to Art Lubke, 3 August 1976, until after is revealed, 25 September 1976, signed Bob Faulkner, sworn and uh, subscribed and score, sworn to me uh, this third day of August 1976, Eleanor J. Fiza, Notary Public. You'll verify that, officer? That's correct. Okay. Okay, you've seen the conditions. Now let's see what happens. Gee, I, I hope I was right. I hope this works, or I've got my car running outside. The motor's going full <laughs> speed. By. Um, I'll open it. Well, Debbie's going to watch you. How do you open asking boxes? Both corners at the same time, he says. It opens. I've got the piece of paper, and I marked it. That's my writing, and I, Debbie can see this, and I scratched, out, uh, I scratched out a letter in there. I don't think the camera can see it. I scratched out the Y of for your family. The Y is scratched out, and that's what I did. I put TBA, again, why I put those three letters. I'm not sure it worked, looked nice, and I wrote that on the outside. And I can't wait to open it. May I? Yeah, I didn't do as well as I promised, but go ahead. Okay. I hope you all have the papers with you because I brought them once and they may have gotten separated. We need the Tribune first, I think. Okay. All right, that's only the side. Where's the front page of the Tribune? You people aren't going to believe this. Oh, boy. 
Oh, boy. Uh, up on top, it says, Chicago Tribune. Could we hold that up? The camera right out in front. Right out in front here. I'll have Debbie read this top line here. Her sentence to seven. Is that close enough? Uh, next one is, you should probably tell me, State Journal. <laughs> Can we hold that up, Debbie? Hold it right out the camera out front. Um, I like people, but I don't like this black-white business. We're all brothers, and so they may, this may be a little different. It reads, majority rule for, for Rhodesia. Okay. I didn't expect this one. Bob said there'd be two newspapers listed. There's three in here. I guess he wanted to <laughs> he wanted to double check on himself. Uh, Cap Times is next. Can we hold that one up. And Debbie, would you read that? EPA curbs on gasoline in abeyance. In, in abeyance. Mm -hmm. oh. And I asked him to go on a radio show tomorrow night, and I said, "Could you do a a, a ball game score prediction?" How many of you saw the game today? Okay, it was one of these seesaw affairs, and somebody would score, and somebody else would do something. There were fumbles and surprise plays. Uh, there was a, an onside kick. And how many of you guessed at the score? Anybody come fairly close? Bob Faulkner said Badgers 35, Cougars 26.